Hi there everyone, today I'm with Louisiane from the Royal Society Collection and she has an amazing box here to open for us. You've been putting together a bit of a collection downstairs, I understand, all about meteorology. Yeah, that's right. We have an exhibition that we're uh, working on with the Met Office, so the uh, Meteorological Office for Great Britain, and it's about climate science and weather science and how it evolved from the 17th century to today. So it goes from boil and names like this to climate science and how it's looking at global warming today. So the box is coming from the Met Office and it holds, uh, yeah, a treasure. Oh yeah. So we have to be extra careful today because, That's right. because this isn't a Royal Society object. This is on loan from the Met Office. That's so. right. And if they see us mishandling it, it's not going to fly. <laughs> all right. All right. There's lots of padding and packaging, which is very necessary because today's object is made of glass, I believe. Wow. That is gorgeous. So it does look like we're going to have a bit of a seance. Yeah, are you going to read my fortune or something? And actually from uh, up here, you can see the reflection of the uh, candelabra. It's actually quite beautiful. You can see the lamp. Yeah. yeah. You can see it says sunshine recorder. Casella. This to me looks like it's one of the really old instruments that would have been on a ship in the 17th century or something but you were telling me before this is actually quite a modern piece that's been loaned to you by the, the Met Office. That's right so this one will be from uh, the 19, 1940s but actually um, the design has remained the same since the 19th century. The way it works is like a sundial you want to have a fixed point and you want to let the sun rotate around it and do the markings on those paper instrument which um, is the duration of a whole day. So this would slide into this holder around the back? Exactly, exactly and you let the sun just burn its marks and um, the three papers that came with it you can actually see different days and how sunny or not sunny it was. So this one very sunny, it was sunny all day whereas these ones you can see there was just a little bit of, of sun in the morning a bit more in the afternoon and it tails off. Oh, look at this day. It was in and out all day on this right. day. Look, it's like Morse code. Sun out, sun in, sun out, sun in. Little bit of sun, little bit of sun, cloudy again. And you can see here, Louisiane, at the end of the day, they actually add up how much has been burnt to tell how much sunshine there was that day. Exactly, so 5.6 hours. And on this one, 12.9, so a very sunny day. We also have um, the location, so the station is in Lerwick. I have no idea where Lerwick is. No. Um, don't know. <laughs> James, you'll you put that on the screen for you. Yeah, that's where Lewick is. <laughs> Our friend Keith, who works with you at the, in the collections here, said that I have to make some sort of joke about how the sun is never out in London or England. But look, look out there. Look out there and look Gorgeous. sunny all day. We have the proof. Now, the instrument itself is called a Campbell uh, Stokes recorder and it's named after two people who are both quite important for the instrument at least. Campbell is Sir John Francis Campbell. He's a scholar who collects Gaelic Scottish tales. He's into folklore and Gaelic language yeah. so it's quite funny to have him associated with this type of instrument. This was just a little side project for him. Or? Side project and he writes a, a really poetic book about making scientific experiments just looking at the sun and how the sun is acting and giving you photographs so he's experimenting with the early photographs in the 1850s and with this but the way he designs the book and um, we can have a look actually in, uh, in that book to have a bit more context the way he designs his instruments first is quite different we have a description here in the proceedings of the Royal Society it describes it as a hemispherical cavity made uh, in a block of wood and a spherical lens made to be placed in, in the cavity. And that's right. the original design, that's the Campbell sun recorder. Yeah. And Stokes changes it and uses this sturdy metal surround because he already knows that it's going to be much more stable in the condition that you would want to have the instrument, which is in all weathers. When Campbell tries his experiment with the first one, he actually comments on the fact that um, the limits of the experiment is only works when the sun is directly on it. So here what we have in the book is actually the first time that sunshine is recorded for a long period. And you can see it's 1855 to 1874. And he invents the instrument in, in 1851. So it catches on pretty quickly. And that's actually by order of the House of Commons that it has to be recorded for long periods of time to know the atmospheric conditions in so London. So the parliament itself has said, we want to know how much sunshine there is and sort yes. of commissions the work. That's right. It's not for the tourist board. I think it's just out of scientific interest. And here, you actually have a list. The records goes on for 25 years. They look at the equinox and they just measure for each equinox how much sunshine there is. 
So from December to June, and then from June to December each year, and they do like a sort of a mean, a measurement to say how much sunlight there was each day. And exactly, and it has to be direct sunshine, and yet yeah, yearly values of the heat of sunshine. So from that, they deduce how hot it was. One of the things which is fascinating with the balls and with the paper record, yeah. you actually have a piece of paper, an imprint of what happened, and you can conserve this imprint. I think they're quite beautiful pieces of paper. Very nice and a really, really impressive instrument. Can I feel how heavy it is? I yes, will. it is very heavy. Yeah. So usually those sits on top of a pedestal. It can't be obscured by any trees. So any tree would actually obviously bias the, uh, the record. Yep. So they have to be on top of something quite high. Yep. And we actually have a photo of one in sight as part of the instruments of the uh, SDL Muir Observatory. The observatory was one of the first that was put together in Scotland by the Met Office and the Royal Society. And the idea was to measure seismic activity, but mostly weather. It was a weather station. So oh, here we go. Yes. Sunshine recorder. It's not our sunshine recorder. But not it's, exactly. But it's, it's one being used in action at the observatory on its little pillar. Is that a bird poop? Probably. It's, it's, it's central Scotland, so <laughs> maybe it is, <laughs> but you have to clean it. So if it was, you, you couldn't have that on the, on the glass because that would actually oh, no. bias your measures, oh, but no. obviously, so you do have to spruce it up every now and again. And there is a bit of text here. It says, sunshine recorder. This is simply a spherical burning glass mounted on a pedestal in such a way that the sun's rays are brought to a focus on a marked chart. When the sun shines, the heat produced at the focus is sufficient to char the card at that point. When the chart is removed, it is an easy matter to see at what times the sun was shining. Yeah, it's a faster way of saying what we've been explaining yeah. <laughs> so far. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better ourselves, and we have video proof of that. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, very cool instrument. It's one that shows that you don't need very complicated designs. Sometimes you can do science with easy material, where simple things and just this ball of glass in a metal surround is just enough to tell you how the sun is shining. And then you can actually look at the changes in, in the weather and in the climate. So that's a very important piece of uh, science for us. Brilliant. This Brady is a Shorten Mason barograph. This is what science is supposed to look like. And I'm here with like the most English of Englishmen and I know how much you love talking about weather. So you must be super excited about this. Well, yeah, you know what the weather's like if you look out the window, but it's nice to have an instrument to tell you as well. So this is doing the barometric pressure, presumably. That's right. So it's, it's, it's like a barometer, but it measures it over time because you have a clockwork drum here. So it's called a barograph. 